Okay, this side is done except for the, the main uh, battery wire because I don't know what gauge wire that is yet and I probably don't have it. I mean, I've got some 14 and it may be 14, but I'm just not going to mess with it right now. Um, I think it's 12. I'm, I'm going to go get some 12 uh, and then we'll figure that out. But right now I know these are all correct now. So this is our, our positive to the uh, coil on this side. And you can see I did shrink wrap all the way up so nothing touches and I shrink wrapped and these are both soldered so underneath and then shrink wrapped and then here's the negative one soldered and shrink wrapped and then shrink wrapped shrink wrapped up to the connector itself and that's it and uh, yeah I need to do something with this I just don't like the way it looks so we'll, we'll figure that out though um, but this side is done except for one and now I'm gonna move to the next side um, I'm just doing the same thing over there. It looks exactly the same. So I'm not gonna be showing that but There you go That's the major parts of the electrical system One last thing um, This main on this side I decided to go ahead and just pour it apart and look at this fuse This fuse wire is 18 gauge Okay the main bike wire is 12 gauge. So you're basically restricting this um, by putting this fuse in the line. Even though you're protecting it with the fuse, you're still causing issues uh, for current and voltage by not making it a 12 volt or a 12 gauge wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just throw this away. No, I'm gonna throw it away. It looks, no I am. The wires are frayed right there. I, mean, I just noticed that. So yeah, we'll take the fuse out of it, but other than that, we'll toss the rest of it away. Um, I've got new leads right down there, so we can, we can put those back on. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some 12 gauge wire. And then, same thing, extend it just like I did these two. Um, but it's good to know that this was 12 gauge. That might have been, Gary kept saying that he had a problem with the tail light going out. Um, you know, it's working right now for some odd reason when I put a battery in it, but he said it keeps going out. This might be part of that problem because it's getting the wrong voltage or something. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to just replace that anyway and be done with it. All right. That's electrical lesson number one for me. Now I'm over on the right hand side of the bike um, doing all the negative ground and the uh, coil wires over here. Um, and what I was planning on doing was just cleaning them up because they just looked green, right? At first I just thought they looked green. Um, when I closer inspection, it's wires completely chewed through right there. And you can see it's chewed through because there's teeth marks. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and replace both of these. Um, just the, just the caps, though. I mean, just the, uh, the terminal ends. I'm not going to replace any wire or anything. The, the rest of it, the wire is fine. It's just for some reason right up in here. And it's just on this one. But since I'm doing one, I'm going to do both. And this is pretty greenish. Uh, I'll just go ahead and throw a new lead on it. I've got one right here. So I'll just put a new one on, be done with it. That way I know all of these are good. I still have to figure out something to do with these, um, but I'll figure that out next. Well, I just found another issue. Um, this is the negative for the distributor on this side, which was the distributor that um, was all chewed up. And I don't know if you can see that, but the wires are... Um, black. I'm about halfway, I've cut about half the wire off. You should only need to go about an inch or two and cut it off and get fresh copper. Um, I've got nothing here. Still nothing. Um, and then it goes into the uh, it's the middle plug on the uh, ignition amplifier. So I'm really debating on whether to just replace this entire connector and just put, you know, bleeds on them. Just remove this connector entirely because um, this whole wire is bad. I I'm sure all the way up into there, it's going to be bad. There's no reason to even try to use it. 
um, which tells me the rest of them probably are too. So I'll have to trace them back to how far they can, can see good bear copper wire. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to give a quick update. Um, that's what I'm looking at. I'll still make it, you know, all removable by putting leads and, and sleeves on them, but, you know, this is, just isn't going to work. I mean, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see how black that is, but it's, it's been burned up pretty good. So, that's definitely a problem. Um, going to stop us from being able to start the bike. So, you're not getting good connectivity through the wires. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna, I guess, have to rewire the entire piece here. Hey everybody! Which means rewiring the whole bike almost. I mean, that's really what it's coming down to. I'm rewiring the entire bike. So I just wanted you to see that. If you see wire that looks like that, where it's real black like that, you, you can cut it back usually about an inch or so, and you should see fresh copper wire. If you don't, then that means that this sleeve is compromised and that there's something wrong with it, and it's it's corroded your entire wire. So here, I can probably even do it again. Um, I'm going to replace it anyway. So here, I'll just cut one off, and let's see where we're at. Yeah, see, still black. Still black. So let's try it on, on uh, one of these ground wires, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to... Which one does this go to? Yeah, this is the one that goes to my connector, so I'll try it. Um, it's important to note that this custom experience extends across all of us. Not just the child. It's probably a 12 or no, 14 maybe. Alright, see how that's. Well, even it's a little bit bad. Um, but you see how it's got much more copper look to it. So it's still okay. It's, it's not disastrous. It's still okay. But the other one. Here, compare the two. Let me fan uh, this one out. The first question they'll ask me is if, if I've met Bill Murray, and I have to say I'm probably the only chiver that has There you go. I, I don't you can see this one, you can see pretty shiny copper on on the top one, where on the bottom one is just nothing but black, except for the very tips where I've cut it. So, yeah. That's a problem. Um, whole wire needs replaced. All right, looks like I'm rewiring the entire bike, more or less. <laughs> so away we go. And there we go. The wiring is all done. I had to basically eliminate this harness. Um, it just, I mean, it was just too bad, and there was no reason to keep it. I mean, as long as I know where the wires go, that's all I care about, and uh, they're all right here now, so we're good, these three, and I shortened one, I had to com completely replace this wire, um, it used to run up in there, um, I ran it back down, and joined it here, no, not that one, this one, this one. It ran up in here, um, but really it just needed to go to here. For some reason it went up, looped around, and came back down. So I just shortened that. Um, and it wasn't connected to anything else up here. It was just kind of wrapped, like in a U. <laughs> so whatever. Um, so replace the whole thing. Done. Um, I'm, I realized that these O-rings here, or these grommets, uh, here's the old one um, really stiff I mean just it's like hard plastic now they're supposed to be soft rubbery so uh, I had some of these and they work perfectly so I'm gonna use them and I'll show you on the other side what I'm talking about because um, this is the side that's done also basically um, this rubber grommet sits into this little slot here into this little slot just like that and to get the old ones out I actually bent this a little bit trying to get the old one out because it was so hard so now I have nice soft rubber grommets to go in there to hold the wires um, and that's good uh, the only thing I still need to do as far as this is replace this with a 12 gauge fuse um, other than that, everything else is wired up and ready to go. 
This one was a pain in the butt because it had a, uh, a, a ton of bad wire. Like I had to replace, you can see all the black in there. That's all the black wire or wires that I had to replace um, because they were just too corroded, like way down into the sleeve, which they shouldn't be. You know, you should be able to cut down a little bit and find some fresh copper, but I wasn't able to, so I had to redo the whole thing. And, uh, but I made them all, you know, connectors instead of hardwiring them. That way, if I need to pull this, this ignition amplifier off, I can. If I need to pull the, you know, anything else off, I can. Um, as you can tell, most of the wires just go to this ignition amplifier. So I went ahead and, you know, put leads on them so I can just pull that off if I need to. And if I need to, let's say, replace the ignition amplifier, it's going to come probably with a connector like this, which means I'll have to cut it off and put those on. But, oh well, uh, is what it is. Um, at least I know now I have good connectivity. I know all of my wires are good. Um, uh, the only wires I haven't checked are the headlight, the front headlight, the front turn signals, and I'm assuming this should have marker lights going at the front also, which aren't working. None of those are working. And the back, the, you know, the real tail lights, the real tail light, tail light, um, which we know works right now, actually. Um, and the brake light works, just these turn signals don't. So they, they don't have marker lights in the back, I don't believe. Um, most motorcycles don't. They're just turn signals. Um, so I'm not too worried about that, Ele the electrical parts there. Um, it's just wiring at that point, you know. Um, it, it, easy to fix. Easy, easy, easy. Just replace wire. I mean, it's tedious, you know. I say easy. It's not easy. It's just tedious <laughs> um, so yeah so the only thing I still haven't looked at yet is the rectifier down here which um, I, I will pull that off but I'm getting kind of tired so I don't think I'm gonna do it today um, doing all this stuff just kind of wore me out so I've got all this taken care of and technically if I had good coils I could probably try to start it now, put everything back together. Obviously, I still have my carbs on, um, but put everything back together. And I, I guess I technically could try to start it, but I'm, I'm not even going to attempt it with those coils. Um, I'll just wait till I get new ones. Uh, so there it is. Uh, electrical wiring is good to go. As, you know, as far as getting the bike started and running, um, we should be okay. The only thing I can think of now would be uh, to throw a battery in it and just see what happens. But there's no, like I said, there's no sense in doing that if I don't have the coils. So I, uh, I've cleaned up this tray completely and primered it. So now I'm going to take it out there and, and uh, paint it black. So it kind of, like I said, it just sits down in there. Um, it looked like it was originally black at one point, so I'm just going to repaint it back to black. Um, yeah, I know it's got a lot of pitting, but I, if I try to sand it and to get rid of the pitting, I'm literally, I mean, there's a hole right there in the middle. So I, I can't get rid of the pitting. If, if I do, I'm going to lose half the, the metal itself and it'll just be too flimsy. So I'm just going to leave it like it is because it's still fairly sturdy. Um, you know, I got all the rust off, and this is uh, the, obviously the red oxide primer, so it should seal it up real well. Um, red oxide primer can be used as a, as a primer and as a top coat if you wanted it to. So it, it should seal it up really well. Um, and then once I actually, you know, paint it black, which I will do here directly. And what I'm going to use, just so you know, and, and I realize it's probably not the best, but um, I'm using, I'm going to either use this, this matte finish um, Rust-Oleum that, I mean, this stuff goes on really well. I've got it on the, uh, the CM450 there, and it looks really good. So... I don't know if I'm going to do it with this because the only other black paint I have 
is um, this engine enamel. Um, and, you know, up there, it's not going to get hot. I don't need that, but, it, you know, it's shiny, whereas the other one's matte. So, I just haven't decided yet. Um, the good thing about this engine enamel, though, is it's, um, it's chemical resistant. So, you see there, gas and oil resistant. So, it might actually be the thing to use on most of this stuff, even though it's, you know, never going to reach that temperature. Um, just due to the gas and oil resistance, is, is worth probably painting the frame and, you know, here, because the oil's there, the gas tank's here. You know, I might just do the whole thing with this and, and be done with it. Uh, the stuff's it's not cheap, but it, it's really good. I mean, it... it it, it lays out really well. It doesn't, you know, orange peel that bad, and uh, I like it. It's 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 a good little paint. So I'll, yeah, I think I am. I think I'm going to use this one. So there we go. I just made the decision. <laughs> we'll put the other one away, and you can see I've got a, a selection of uh, chemicals and paints and all that good stuff. So, but yeah, that's that's where I'm at now. Um, wiring, as far as I am concerned. The wiring minus this one right here. Uh, again, I need to replace that with a 12 gauge fuse, uh, 12 gauge wire with a fuse. Um, paint this, and that's it. Everything's buttoned up now. Um, I'll retape everything, of course. You know, run tape around it and get it all back secured, but I won't do that until I get this in and, and ready to go that way I know where I can start and stop tape from um, and I'll make try to make it look as clean as possible instead of having a big you know wire nest up here I'm gonna try to keep most of it down under here where it's hidden sorry down under here where it's hidden um, and have only like a couple on this side I've already done I've already started doing that um, that's why this wires here See, I mounted, I uh, spliced it in here instead of, it used to run all the way up and mount in with this. So I eliminated one wire there coming through this grommet. So now there's only three now coming through this grommet. And I'm going to see what I can do on the other side to, to minimize that also. Um, yeah, obviously you're not going to see it or anything because the seat will be on it, but it's, it causes less confusion while you're up there. You got a battery terminal, you got, you know, uh, this is a battery terminal, this one with the, the round piece on it, um, and these two go to the coil, and that's it, right? Same thing on the other side, I'll, I'll try to reduce it to just that, um, just so it looks nicer when you do take the, the cover off and everything's not jumbled up inside of here, um, like, you know, that, that red piece. This was all up in here like this and you know just twisted around and you know it just didn't look all that good it, you know it looked I mean it just looked like it was too messy so I'm gonna make that look a little better I may even have to extend a wire to do it which is fine I don't care it's easy enough um, but that's where I'm at um, replace this paint that black and then I'm gonna put all that back together along with the carbs, the air box, and uh, I think that's it. Then I just need the coils and a battery, which I can borrow a battery from the other bike. But yeah, just the coils. And then I might actually be able to try to kick it over again. And I think it will work this time. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Basically, we're just waiting on two coils. Battery I can get tomorrow if I need it. Um, not going to, but I will. If, I mean, I'll get one. As soon as I put that battery in this bike, and I know this bike runs, I'll get a different battery for it. That way I have to. But for now, I'm just sticking with, with what I'm, I've got. Um, wiring's done repaint that um, get a new fuse and then I'm done with wiring I believe <laughs> you never know <laughs>
Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at right now, and uh, I think I might be calling it a day once I paint that, which I won't bore you with. I think I've bored you enough already. So that's where it is. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.